Sir, this implies a theoretical element not currently found on the periodic table. When you're creating a new element, the basic idea is that you have a target of something, and you have a beam of something else, and you shoot the beam at the target, and you'll get a heavy element after that fusion occurs. Congratulations. You have created a new element. Alright, stop for a moment. For those of you who have watched all the Iron Man movies, you'll never find this scene, because it's a deleted scene from Iron Man 2. It's the same it got cut, and this scene could have given us a glimpse into how Tony Stark created this new element. Take a look at this hologram. Do you know what this is? This is the periodic table. Yep, the periodic table you probably learned about in school. Later, I will explain the connection between this periodic table and Tony Stark new element. And even more interesting, I will explain the kind of device Tony Stark used to create his new elements, because it related to a particular accelerator in Switzerland, the world's largest scientific experiment which in 2012 succeeded in discovering the God particle. So, stick around for this video, because it's going to be fascinating. Who knows, you may even start to love physics and chemistry more. Sir, this implies a theoretical element not currently found on the periodic table. Alright, this video is part 2 of our discussion on the reactor technology in Tony Stark chest. In the previous video, I explained this is a mini fusion reactor, a futuristic energy technology currently being built in France. If you missed it, you can click the link in the description. Now, let's continue. In Iron Man 2, it's revealed that Tony Stark's life is threatened by his own technology. Palladium, the material used to power the reactor in his chest, is poisoning his body. He has to find a replacement for palladium immediately. Unfortunately, the device that's keeping you alive is also killing you. Tony Stark finds a clue after uncovering some of his father's old belongings. The clue is hidden in this model, and after analyzing it, it turns out to represent the atomic structure of a new element. What is it you're trying to achieve, sir? I'm discovering, uh, correction, I'm rediscovering a new element. Dead for almost 20 years. Still taking me to school. Yep, we need to go back to school to understand what Tony Stark means by new elements. And this is important for those of you studying chemistry. Do you remember this table? This is the periodic table, a list of all the elements in the world, hydrogen, oxygen, iron, copper, uranium, and so on. You might call them atoms or elements, and you were probably taught to memorize them in school. But what's really important is not memorizing them, but understanding the purpose of this table. The periodic table's main function is to determine the material used in various technologies, from batteries, powder fast, to nuclear weapon, and even Iron Man suite. Speaking of his suite, the name Iron Man is actually a bit misleading when you consider the material used. Personal Iron Man, that's kind of catchy, it's got a nice ring to it. I mean, it's not technically accurate, the suit's a gold titanium alloy. Why use gold and titanium? Gold, as you know, is a corrosion resistant metal. If the suite were made of iron, it would rust. Titanium, on the other hand, is as strong as steel, but much lighter. Titanium is a super strong, yet super light metal. It even floats on water. Here's our hit, just a very tiny. Titanium is also the safest material for the human body, which is why it's used in medical implants for broken bones. This combination of coal and titanium make it the perfect material for Iron Man. Strong, lightweight, corrosion resistant, fireproof, and safe for the human body. That's why Tony Stark relies on the periodic table. It holds all the information about elements, their types, properties, strengths, dangers, and rarity. This deleted scene from Iron Man 2 released by Perception, the effect company behind the hologram. Soft Tony combining two elements for the periodic table to find a replacement for palladium. Periodic table? Right here. The scene should have complemented the sequence where Tony searches for new elements, where we see him tinkering with various elements. That he eventually realizes, thanks to his father clue, that he must create a new element, one that doesn't exist at the periodic table. Is that even possible? Not only is it possible, but real-life scientists have done it. The elements highlighted in purple on the periodic table are not naturally occurring. They were created in labs. 
The first artificially created element was technetium, element 43. During World War II, around the same time, the development of the first nuclear plant dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Scientists created the first artificial elements during World War II, and they were actually classified at first, and it was only afterward that they were allowed to announce the discovery of these new elements. To understand how elements are created, watch this scene. What does that look like to you, Jarvis? Not unlike an atom. In which case, the nucleus would be here. Not only did the globe count point to represent an atom and nucleus. Remember, every element of the periodic table is an atom, and inside each atom is a nucleus containing two types of particles proton and neutron. Structure the protons and the neutrons using the pavilions. The structure of proton and neutron is what differentiates one element from another. Above uranium, nothing exists here naturally. They have more protons in their system than anything that we have naturally occurring. Sir, this implies a theoretical element not currently found on the periodic table. When you're creating a new element, the basic idea is that you have a target of something, and you have a beam of something else, and you shoot the beam at the target. Every so often, one of the beam atoms will knock into one of the target atoms, and the two nuclei will fuse together, and you'll get a heavy element after that fusion occurs. Creating a new element is relatively simple in principle. Just increase the number of protons, but to do this, you need a machine called a cyclotron. So we use what's called a particle accelerator, or specifically a cyclotron, which is a large instrument that accelerates ions to a fraction of the speed of light. This is a cyclotron at lab in Russia. This is the kind of mess and Tony Stark try to replicate, even bringing through a wall to the zoo. When we make one of these new elements in the cyclotron, we really have to just add a proton. In this machine, protons are accelerated to near the speed of light, and then smash into a target, altering its structure and creating a new element. The beam comes from the cyclotron, which is right through that wall, and then it travels all the way down this line here until it reaches our target on the other side. That's essentially what Tony Stark did, accelerating proton and hitting the target to change its atomic structure and create new elements. Congratulations, you have created a new element. However, in real world, cyclotron, proton don't shoot out as beam of light to hit the target. Both the proton and the target remain contained within the machine. Right inside this box, that's where our elements are made. But hey, it's a movie. Without those dramatic light effects, it wouldn't be as exciting. Unfortunately, Tony Stark never revealed the name of his new elements or its proton count, and this very devil scene was deleted. Perhaps, because this is fiction, they didn't want to step on the tools of real-world experiment. Interestingly, the machine Tony Stark used resembles not a cyclotron, but Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. The Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest particle accelerator, stretching 27 kilometers underground. It costs billions of dollars and took 10 years to build. However, the Large Hadron Collider is not designed to create new elements, but to discover new particles even crazier than Tony Stark attempted. For example, in 2012, it succeeded in discovering what's known as the God Particle. A scientific discovery this evening. It is making huge headlines across the globe, something truly historic. Researchers tonight say they think they have finally discovered the so-called God Particle. The discovery of the so-called God Particle. Oh, we'd be another step closer to knowing where we came from. It's worth noting that the term called particle is exaggerated. Its real name is the Higgs boson, named after Peter Higgs, who predicted its existence 50 years earlier. Well, I would like to add my congratulations to everybody involved in this tremendous achievement. Uh, for me, it's really an incredible thing that it's happened in my lifetime. <laughs> it's taken. <laughs> The nickname God Particle was derived from the title The Goddamn Particle, a term coined by an author to highlight how difficult it was to find. The pop leisure sorted it into God Particle to make it more marketable. Alright, this is what you can learn from Tony Stark's new elements. I hope this helped you understand. Before we wrap up, here's fun fact about the Large Hadron Collider. Its experiment have an even crazier goal to mimic the creation of the universe, also known as the Big Bang. Because of this, the Large Hadron Collider is often called the Big Bang Machine and this connects to the Infinity Stone. I'll discuss that in another video. Big Bang sends six elemental crystals. 
hurtling across the virgin universe. These infinity stones each control an essential aspect of existence. 